Lesson 4 How God Rescues Us Sabbath Afternoon July 15 By accepting Christ as his personal Savior, man is brought into the same close relation to God and enjoys his special favor as does his own beloved Son. He is honored and glorified and intimately associated with God, his life being hid with Christ and God. Oh, what love! What wondrous love! The purity of Christ has revealed to him his own impurity in its odious colors. He turns from the defiling sin. He looks to Jesus and lives. He finds an all-absorbing, commanding, attractive character in Jesus Christ, the one who died to deliver him from the deformity of sin, and with quivering lip and tearful eye he declares, He shall not have died for me in vain. Thy gentleness hath made me great. Lift him up, page 297. O oh, precious, loving, long-suffering, long-forbearing Jesus, how my soul adores thee! That a poor, unworthy, sin-polluted soul can stand before the holy God, complete in the righteousness of our substitute and surety, wonder, O oh heavens, and be astonished, O oh earth, that fallen man is the object of his infinite love and delight. He rejoices over them with celestial songs, and man defiled with sin, having become cleansed through the righteousness of Christ, is presented to the Father free from every spot and stain of sin, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Romans chapter 8 verse 33. The Upward Look, page 377. Oh, when shall we ever realize the full value of our Savior's work and intercession? When shall we rely upon Him with full confidence and live a noble, pure, and devoted life? To what heights may the imagination reach when sanctified and inspired by the virtue of Christ? We may take in the glories of the future eternal world. We may live as seeing him who is invisible. Walk by faith and not by sight. Through searching the scriptures, we may come to understand what we are to Christ and what he is to us. By beholding him, we are to become changed into his image, becoming co-laborers with him, representatives of him in life and character. We must learn to realize that we are to live as the sons and daughters of God, loving God supremely and our neighbors as ourselves. We are to live a pure, perfect life for Christ's sake. We are to love perfection because Jesus is the embodiment of perfection, the great center of attraction. The life we now live, we must live by faith in the Son of God. Reflecting Christ Page 318. Sunday, July 16. Once dead and deceived by Satan. The same spirit that prompted rebellion in heaven still inspires rebellion on earth. Satan has continued with men the same policy which he pursued with the angels. His spirit now reigns in the children of disobedience. Like him, they seek to break down the restraints of the law of God and promise men liberty through transgression of its precepts. When God's messages of warning are brought home to the conscience, Satan leads men to justify themselves and to seek the sympathy of others in their course of sin. Instead of correcting their errors, they excite indignation against the reprover as if he were the sole cause of difficulty. From the days of righteous Abel to our own time, such is the spirit which has been displayed toward those who dare to condemn sin. The Great Controversy, page 500. Satan will accuse and seek permission to destroy, but it is God that opens the door of refuge. It is God that justifieth him that entereth that door. Then if God be for us, who can be against us? 
O oh, the bright, glorious truth, why do not men discern it? Why not walk in its bright beams? Why do not all who believe talk of Christ's matchless love? The Upward Look, page 377. The Christian's life should be one of faith, of victory, and joy in God. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Truly spoke God's servant Nehemiah, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. And Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord alway, and again I say, Rejoice. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. The Great Controversy, page 477. By the sacrifice of Christ, provision has been made for the believer to receive all things that pertain to life and godliness. In his humanity, perfected by a life of constant resistance of evil, the Savior showed that through cooperation with divinity, human beings may in this life attain to perfection of character. This is God's assurance to us that we too may obtain complete victory. Before the believer is held out the wonderful possibility of being like Christ, obedient to all the principles of the law. But of himself, man is utterly unable to reach this condition. The holiness that God's word declares he must have before he can be saved is the result of the working of divine grace as he bows in submission to the discipline and restraining influences of the spirit of truth. Man's obedience can be made perfect only by the incense of Christ's righteousness which fills with divine fragrance every act of obedience. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 531 and 532. Monday, July 17. Once deluded by our own desires. Even one wrong trait of character, one sinful desire cherished, will eventually neutralize all the power of the gospel. The prevalence of a sinful desire shows the delusion of the soul. Every indulgence of that desire strengthens the soul's aversion to God. The pains of duty and the pleasures of sin are the cords with which Satan binds men in his snares. Those who would rather die than perform a wrong act are the only ones who will be found faithful. The testimony borne to you by the Spirit of God is, Parley not with the enemy. Kill the thorns, or they will kill you. Break up the fallow ground of the heart. Let the work go deep and thorough. Let the plowshare of truth tear out the weeds and briars. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, Page 53. The poor publican felt his need, and with his burden of guilt and shame he came before God, asking for his mercy. His heart was open for the Spirit of God to do its gracious work and set him free from the power of sin. The Pharisee's boastful, self-righteous prayer showed that his heart was closed against the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because of his distance from God, he had no sense of his own defilement, in contrast with the perfection of the divine holiness. He felt no need, and he received nothing. If you see your sinfulness, do not wait to make yourself better. Do you expect to become better through your own efforts? Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. There is help for us only in God. We must not wait for stronger persuasions, for better opportunities, or for holier tempers. We can do nothing of ourselves. We must come to Christ just as we are. Steps to Christ, pages 30 and 31. 
the Lord Jesus is affecting transformation so amazing that Satan stands viewing them as a fortress impregnable to his sophistries and delusions. They are to him an incomprehensible mystery. The angels of God look on with astonishment and joy that fallen men, once children of wrath, are through the training of Christ developing characters after the divine similitude to be sons and daughters of God. The gift of his Holy Spirit, rich, full, and abundant, is to be to his church as an encompassing wall of fire which the powers of hell shall not prevail against. In Heavenly Places, page 282. Tuesday, July 18. Now resurrected, ascended, and exalted with Christ. Christ gave himself for the redemption of the race that all who believe in him may have everlasting life. Those who appreciate this great sacrifice receive from the Savior that most precious of all gifts, a clean heart. They gain an experience that is more valuable than gold or silver or precious stones. They sit together in heavenly places in Christ, enjoying in communion with Him the joy and peace that He alone can give. They love Him with heart and mind and soul and strength, realizing that they are His blood-bought heritage. Their spiritual eyesight is not dimmed by worldly policy or worldly aims. They are one with Christ as He is one with the Father. In Heavenly Places, Page 7. For what was the great controversy permitted to continue throughout the ages? It was that the universe might be convinced of God's justice in his dealing with evil, that sin might receive eternal condemnation. In the plan of redemption, there are heights and depths that eternity itself can never exhaust, marvels into which the angels desire to look. The redeemed only of all created beings have in their own experience known the actual conflict with sin. They have wrought with Christ, and as even the angels could not do, have entered into the fellowship of his sufferings. Will they have no testimony as to the science of redemption? Nothing that will be of worth to unfallen beings? Even now, unto the principalities and the powers and the heavenly places is made known through the church the manifold wisdom of God. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10, Revised Version, and chapter 2 verses 6 and 7. Education, page 308. Satan cannot hold the dead in his grasp when the Son of God bids them live. It is all offered us in his word. If we receive the word, we have the deliverance. And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17. This is the word of comfort wherewith he bids us comfort one another. The Desire of Ages, page 320. Wednesday, July 19. Now blessed forever by grace. Not because we first loved him did Christ love us, but while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He does not treat us according to our desert. Although our sins have merited condemnation, he does not condemn us. Year after year, he is born with our weakness and ignorance, with our ingratitude and waywardness. 
notwithstanding our wanderings, our hardness of heart, our neglect of his holy word, his hand is stretched out still. Grace is an attribute of God exercised toward undeserving human beings. We did not seek for it, but it was sent in search of us. God rejoices to bestow his grace upon us, not because we are worthy, but because we are so utterly unworthy. Our only claim to his mercy is our great need. Every human being is the object of loving interest to him who gave his life that he might bring men back to God. Souls guilty and helpless, liable to be destroyed by the arts and snares of Satan, are cared for as a shepherd cares for the sheep of his flock. The Ministry of Healing, pages 161 and 162. Our confession of his faithfulness is heaven's chosen agency for revealing Christ to the world. We are to acknowledge his grace as made known through the holy men of old. But that which will be most effectual is the testimony of our own experience. We are witnesses for God as we reveal in ourselves the working of a power that is divine. Every individual has a life distinct from all others and an experience differing essentially from theirs. God desires that our praise shall ascend to him marked with our own individuality. These precious acknowledgments to the praise of the glory of his grace, when supported by a Christ-like life, have an irresistible power that works for the salvation of souls. It is for our own benefit to keep every gift of God fresh in our memory. By this means, faith is strengthened to claim and to receive more and more. There is greater encouragement for us in the least blessing we ourselves receive from God than in all the accounts we can read of the faith and experience of others. The soul that responds to the grace of God shall be like a watered garden. His health shall spring forth speedily, his light shall rise in obscurity, and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon him. The Ministry of Healing, page 100. In the matchless gift of his Son, God has encircled the whole world with an atmosphere of grace as real as the air which circulates around the globe. All who choose to breathe this life-giving atmosphere will live and grow up to the stature of men and women in Christ Jesus. Steps to Christ, page 68. Thursday, July 20. Now saved by God. Such is the grace of God, such the love wherewith he hath loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, enemies in our minds by wicked works, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, the slaves of debased appetites and passion, servants of sin and Satan. What depth of love is manifested in Christ as he becomes the propitiation for our sins. Through the ministration of the Holy Spirit, souls are led to find forgiveness of sins. The purity, the holiness of the life of Jesus as presented from the Word of God possesses more power to reform and transform the character than do all the efforts put forth in picturing sins and crimes of men and the sure results. One steadfast look to the Savior uplifted upon the cross will do more to purify the mind and heart from every defilement than will all the scientific explanations by the ablest tongue. Lift him up, page 297. In his word, God reveals what he can do for human beings. He molds and fashions after the divine similitude the characters of those who will wear his yoke. Through his grace, they are made partakers of the divine nature and are thus enabled to overcome the corruption that is in the world through lust. It is God who gives us power to overcome. Those who hear his voice and obey his commandments are enabled to form righteous characters. Those who disregard his expressed commands will form characters like the propensities that they indulge. It is a knowledge of the perfection of the divine character manifested to us in Jesus Christ that opens up to us communion with God. 
It is by appropriating the great and precious promises that we are to become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 943. Our acceptance with God is sure only through His beloved Son, and good works are but the result of the working of His sin-pardoning love. They are no credit to us, and we have nothing accorded to us for our good works by which we may claim a part in the salvation of our souls. Salvation is God's free gift to the believer, given to him for Christ's sake alone. The troubled soul may find peace through faith in Christ, and his peace will be in proportion to his faith and trust. He cannot present his good works as a plea for the salvation of his soul. But are good works of no real value? Is the sinner who commits sin every day with impunity regarded of God with the same favor as the one who through faith in Christ tries to work in his integrity? The scripture answers, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Selected Messages, Book 3, page 199. For further reading, Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, The Victorious Life, pages 515 to 520, and My Life Today, The Exceeding Riches of His Grace, page 100.